one. It's the 8th of April. Down the allotment today to actually try and make a start. Um, as some of you know, who followed me for years, I'm on a very particularly wet plot. And it tends to be about coming right around this time of year, but because we've had a really extremely wet sort of winter, um, it's it's not ready. It's, you know, I can't, I can't, it's not worth, I mean, the paths are underwater still. You know, so if I, if I dig my potato bed over, I'll just create a sump you know, for all the water to drain into. And then when I plant my spuds, they'll rot off. So I need I need the, the, the sort of water table to drain down a bit more, which it will probably do over the next three or four weeks. I hope so, um, because I still, I aim to plant this plot up in um, 12 days, you know, but it's going to be a squeeze. I was hoping to get down there a bit before, but the weather's just been so bad. Um, I don't particularly want to be walking about my past today, but I have to get these beds ready. Um, so I'm just all I'm going to do. I, I usually I'd have topped these beds up through the winter months, um, but I haven't done. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to weed them, put an ounce of blood fish and bone meal every square meter, use a three prong cultivator, and just work it into the top sort of inch or so, and then they're, they're kind of ready. And the next time I come up will be so I need to make sure my nets are ready to go, and then it's just a case of coming up and planting them. Um, but yeah, I need to get the bulk of the, as much of the prep as I can get done with what I've got um, for this year, I think, and uh, we'll go from there. But I've been filming stuff over this last month, even though I've not been able to get on with things outside. I think I had one day that was nice, so I, I, I targeted the back garden, because I always plant the back garden up sooner than here, because it obviously gets drier and it's just outside my back door, so I can manage it. So there'll be some footage that I've collected. Um, so it might be a bit sort of bitty, it's like pricking out tomatoes and, you know, um, a few few other bits and bobs um sowing peas in gutters i did them probably three weeks ago um they're coming on um so they'll be going out probably in a couple of weeks you know whether i put them down here i probably will do i'll sturdy this up and i'll give this another run this year this and then i'll have to probably repost this or something uh and deal with other jobs through the season as, as and when i can but yeah there'll be bits of footage so it might be a bit it miss here and there but i thought i'll try and edit it all down um, because i've been intending on doing videos but then you, you go out and you do a bit and then the weather turns bad and then you can't get out and do anything for a while so uh so yeah there's there's um there's lots of potting on which i'll exp i'll explain when i get back home after and i've still got a little bit to do um and i'll explain that then but for now i'm just gonna weed this weed as much as i can get, get what i can done to you know a couple of hours it is spitting me rain now and then um, I'll get the camera and I'll look around, but it's pretty much the same. <laughs> it's very wet, very, you know, soggy. And these are underwater, these paths. Um, and so I'll see what I can get done today and hopefully not fall over or hurt my knee. Because last time I was here, um, my foot got sort of stuck in some soil and I must have jarred my knee because I ended up with a blue knee. Uh, I was hoping to come down the day after, you know, but uh, <laughs> knee injury then, so that stopped me from doing it. But uh, we. We shall get on with what we can, but like I said, it's been such a terrible uh, winter with, with the amount of rain. As I say, it's, it's the wettest I've, I've had it this time of year. It's usually back to sort of damp soil, not underwater now usually as far as I know. I'm usually planted up any time between sort of now and, and, and sort of the, the middle of April, I'm usually planting. I mean, I planted a couple of years ago, about 4th of 5th of April, you know. Uh, but the temperatures is nice. I mean, we've got some decent temperatures. It's sort of like, you know, they're not even dipping below 10 degrees, you know, which is, it is time. It's just the, the rain's here, that's the problem. You know, um, so we shall get on and see what we can get done. Hey everyone, it's the 14th of March. We're back in the kitchen, as you can see, because it's uh, weather's still horrendous outside. We did have a nice, nice few days, you know, last week, and I went to the plot, cleared some asparagus and that, and then I damaged my knee, so I've not been able to get back up there. So I'm feeling a bit more up to it today, but obviously it's chucking it down outside. So I thought I'll uh, prick these tomatoes out because um, they're pretty much ready now. Um, I did have to order some more sand miles on. If you remember in my last video, I didn't have any sand miles on those seeds. Uh, I thought I had some knocking around, but I didn't. So I had to buy some seeds. And I, had, I needed a few claps and cauliflower, so I put both of them in the same tray. I'm not going to be pricking them out today. I need a few more days yet. But um, everything else is pretty much uh, all right um they've just been on windowsill to be honest they're starting to get a bit leggy so i need to get them pricked out and uh, i've got some lights up in the attic i'll probably put them under them because it's still a bit cold outside so if you've uh, not got anywhere heated or protected just hang fire for a week or two um or just keep a real close eye don't let any cold wind they're probably okay if you put a propagate lid over them, but any sort of cold draft on them will just keel them over they just don't do well in the cold 
Um, you know, so you've got like a conservatory where they get light from above as well, and they'll probably be okay in that. But they do need quite a lot of light. So I've got some pots already pre-filled. I've done my big pale peppers already. They're all done the same way. Um, so there's just uh, seven centimetre pots filled with the um, same mix I've, I've been using, to be honest, a bit of bort, a bit of my own, some vermiculite, um, to see how they get on. Because obviously my own compost is fine, it's just a bit, little bit wet. Um, I did sow some more onion seeds, um, which I, I might, if I can think of, I'll, I'll, I'll find some bits of footage on that. And then add it to this, or I'll put it up a later day. I'm still, still sort of testing to see how it comes out. It's a different way of, you know, germinating to have a bit more of a guaranteed success with a complete tray rather than gaps. Because I had a lot of problem with my other, my other ones, but I've still got quite a few. Um, the other ones have been okay. So uh, we shall get on and break some of these out. I'll probably get bits of footage over the next few days to put in this video um, just to fill it out a bit. So, uh, same sort of bits of tools you require. Um, you don't really require, you can use your finger, a fork, a spoon handle, but I've got a little dibber, use a pencil if you want, like a little prong fork. I'll put the camera a bit close so you can, so you can uh, see a bit clearer what I'm doing. And we'll get on with that. Right, we'll start off with these, I've got some of Sun Gold and Shirley. Um, I'll probably, I don't know how many varieties I've got here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've got eight, so um, I might have to do a bit of mix and match along the way at some point. I only really need three of each one, but I don't want to uh, just do three and then I'll lose one because then I'll end up short. So I'll have to do a bit of a backup. But I might just do um, so many of each for now. It's just labeling them. So I'll probably do um, five of each for now. Um, and we'll go with that. So I'll start with the, uh, the uh, Sun Golds. So these are just like, I sold them in. You know, they've come up with a few that have Respire. Obviously, this compost with me own it does tend to have tomato seeds in it, so some of these actually might be random seeds. So uh, we'll just hope for the best on that one. But, you know, if you if you could sterilise your compost if you want to microwave or oven to kill anything off. You know, if it has got proper hot the compost when you've made it, it will kill bulk of the bulk of seeds. But I always find tomatoes just tend to spring up here and there. So um, pretty straightforward, really. Just try and dig down, and get plenty of root. Right by the leaves and just coax it out. Get your roots. And just pick your pot. Pick one where you can see a bit better, this one. And uh, you can bury them deeper. I'm not going to bury them all the way down, but uh, a fair bit of the way down, probably. You, know, you, can, you can bury it pretty much, you know, right down. Just nestle it in like that. This compost, I watered it... Um, about two days ago, so it has had a drain, but I will give these a little water again, just around the stem, just to nestle it down. And then just repeat that process. You know, it's uh, it's fairly straightforward. Um, obviously these are a lot more fragile than things like brassicas. Brassicas are quite hardy. You know, uh, tomato plants are uh, quite robust. And you probably find that a couple of days, they might, they might wilt a little bit and then they'll perk up. But if they don't, obviously that, you know, they can fail. But once they perked up again and they start growing, they do grow quite quick. Um, so the aim is these will be potted on again into probably one litre pots, probably in about um, a month or three weeks, maybe. And then um, obviously they'll end up going into the final three litre pots, which I use for doing the bottomless pots into the actual main beds then which will be sort of mid-may they'll go into the final place in the polytunnel somewhere around there anyway and uh you don't have to start feeding anything so you start seeing flowers um sun golds are usually about the first ones to start chucking out the flowers to be honest um, but don't worry about it, you can pick them off if need be, and if you've not got them in the final place. If they start getting a bit yellow, a bit pasty looking, they might need a little bit of feed. It just depends how long they're held in pots. So, all five of them in there. It is a, 
a good idea as well to not throw any of your surplus ceilings away. You know, if you keep them in here and keep them watered, they will get a bit leggy and a bit tatty. But if anything happens to your main seeds, at least you've got some backups and you can just bury them down in, you know, you could even if they end up like eight inches high, you can bury it all the way down in the pot and all that stem will put out some roots. It's just guess we're just gonna put some a little bit of water. I'm gonna put some water in and a little bit of warm water so it's not icy cold water and just settle these in and that'll be it. So I'll just uh, carry on doing the rest of these and we'll have a look. And I need to remember to put some labels in because I don't want to pull these labels out. Right, that's all them pricks out now. Just got to wait for my San Marzano for a few days to get a little bit bigger and then I'll uh, pop them in another tray. I've already put some more pots of uh, compost aside ready for them. So this is a mix of tomatoes and peppers. So I've obviously got five of the varieties which are uh, Tigerella, Moneymaker, Gardener's Delight, Shirley, Sungold, Alicante. I've got some uh, Roma, which is about Roma VF. Um, I think they're a bit of a determinant plant and they don't tend to get very high so I might plant them in pots somewhere else this year. Uh, we've got a mix here, we've got four of the, um, the like shop bought ones um, that I seeded either last year or the year before. My own seed, then I've got three jalapenos, three basket of fire, which are absolutely tiny at the moment, but don't worry, things like chilies tend to just germinate and do nothing for a little while. Um, then we've got some cayenne, I'm doing some cayenne this year, it's supposed to be good for your circulation and whatnot. Um, and then these are the giant bell peppers. There's 10 of those, which will be going under the little um, sort of mini cloche thing down the garden when it comes to the main summertime. So fingers crossed we get another bump of crop of peppers. But uh, last year was a cracking year for peppers, so we get a repeat of that, I'd be more than happy. So they've all had a water. They will all sulk and limp, you know, probably today and a bit tomorrow. But they'll um, they'll perk up. A few of these are that small. I don't know whether they're... can't tell you what's actually sprouted from the compost or not in the money maker, but we'll just see what happens. I only intend on probably going three of each variety, but it leaves me some options. So as these get bigger, I can put some outside under a propagator. And should they accidentally get nipped by frost, I've got some indoors as well. Um, I'm hoping to have them all sort of outside in about two or three weeks and then just bring them in at night and then cover them over the towel. So they get darkness because they do need a rest. You know, they don't need light all day long. Under the lights upstairs, they've got about 12 hours light they get. Um, it's only a little two foot by 18 inch sort of light, it only sort of covers this area, that's it, you know. Um, so I have to do it in, in bits up there from using the lights, but uh, so these will benefit now, I think, from going under the lights. So they'll go that nice dark, dark green, and some of the true leaves will start coming up. And once they've sort of rooted in, they should get going. So uh, we'll get on with something else, and I'll add to this video. So I'll probably be pricking some celery out, I think, because uh, that's tiny, but I'll prick it out anyway at some point, probably up tomorrow. We shall see, but that's it for today anyway. So I just thought I'd uh, put that uh, that job out of the way and then um, and get on with some other stuff. Right, it's the 22nd of March now, so I thought I'll uh, I'm gonna start these peas in the gutters. I've done it for quite a few years now. So um, compost I'm using these are just like spent compost. So it's what I grew some potatoes in, some pepper plants in last year, or some chili plants. It's just uh, some old spent compost. You can use your own or multi-purpose. Um, still be aware, you know, if you get any frost or any cold. You know, it can affect them a little bit, but peas are a bit more, they can tolerate the cold a little bit better. Obviously not, not being frozen. Um, so I've filled these gutters up. Um, so they're about, sort of about an inch down from the top. Um, I, I pre-watered them. So obviously you've got to watch your peas not to actually drown them because they, they can actually rot off quite easy. Uh, her, variety is Hearst Green Shaft. I've pre-soaked them for about four or five hours of adding a jar of water. These gutters are about five foot long and I've kind of caught with a bit of a ratio of about 25 to 35 grams of peas to be spread out and he's kind of all right um, for each one. Because sometimes you can sow them too dense, you know, you can do a sort of five a dice and space in them, but just, just bung them in and cover them so you can, you know, the, the, you just can't see them anymore. Give them a water and, um, you know, if you've got room in, indoors, put them indoors for a few days so you start seeing them come up the top and then put them out. Once they germinate, they're fine. You've got to be careful, obviously, with things like uh, rodents, mice and things like that. And obviously birds, if they're out in the open, you can peck them and stuff and pick them up. So uh, I'm going to chance them in here. Usually I'd have them indoors for a few days, but uh, I say once you get, you know, if you, if you pre-soak, it just speeds up the germination by, you know, a few days and hopefully they don't rot off. So let's drain this water out. 
So it's actually they've been out here and you know in this jar today just sort of like acclimatised. I'll drain this water off. Obviously when you put them in a jar don't fill the jar to the top with peas and then water because uh, they obviously swell, you know, double in size. You know there's some there that swell and some that haven't. So these seeds are my own from last year. If you were following the uh, channel last year you'll notice I had a, a bit of a bad do with my first set of peas. I didn't get there quite in time so they went a bit hard and tough so still picked them, saved them because it saves me buying my own, you know, buying seeds so I'm just using them. You know just, just been kept through the year just in like a zip seal bag so it's just a case of you know usually I'd split this into four equal sort of pots you, know, you don't have to but I kind of like to get it semi-precise but I'm not bothering this year I'm just gonna there's enough there there's about what you know about 125 grams 130 grams I think I weighed out so I'm just gonna sort of equally sort of distribute that across this just scatter them about you know tend to like try and do you know um them all instead of trying to like get one two perfect because you can go along after them with any leftovers and start filling in the blanks you know if you get any gappy areas you know you don't have to use them all because you can dry them back out again you know just put them on a sunny windowsill on a kitchen towel they'll dry back out again um you've got to be careful if you're soaking for too long I wouldn't do them uh, any more than sort of, I mean they do say like 24 hours but I don't even leave them overnight to be honest. Depends how hard they are. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. i say the only problem you get at this stage is them rotting off, which can happen. You know, if it's, it depends how sort of, I mean this compost is quite fine so it could be quite dense on them. Could cause them to rot but there's still time. You know, I'll do a batch now, and then I'll do another batch. Uh, well, I'll be probably harvesting these sort of mid-June, I think. So I'll sow another batch probably first week of June. As soon as you start picking them, kind of like you know, about three or four, over three or four weeks, you tend to pick a lot off. So now I'm just going to kind of look for any gappy sort of areas. You know, this is uh, this is going to be quite a dense. This so. Um, don't feel you have to spread them as you know so as thickly as this. And fingers crossed, they do all right, and the mice leave them alone, which I'm hoping they do. If they don't, then I'll have to do it. I'll soon find out because you'll see little divots dug in, or they just won't germinate, and you'll come and look for them. There'll be none there, so you, know, you can put a mesh over them. I want a little bit of bubble wrap and lay flat over the top and just turn my microphone around a bit because it keeps catching on stuff. Right, so I'm just going to cover that with some uh, compost. A bit smaller bucket than this, but it's just the same stuff. So I'm just going to go over the top of them now and just cover them up and then give them a, a bit of a water. But like I say, it's watered from underneath. So, um, Obviously it's sunny today and they'll have time to drain off. Um, the ends of my gutters I've taped up with some duct tape but there is a couple of holes here to allow for drainage and this shelf is on a slight slope. Um, because I think if they went outside and they got absolutely drenched in rain, um, they could rot off. Once they've sprouted, you know, um, not so bad and, and it's kind of like planting them out. I to try, try and plant them out once they started the little tendrils on a little You'll see them when they grow little leaves on them and then you'll start getting these little strands come off them as they're trying to grip things and they start grabbing on each other. That's the right time to put them out, which, uh, which you'll see me do. But if you want to if you want to have a look at another year, uh, last year's video or year before, um, there is a bit of a knack to getting them out of the gutter. The trick is he's just uh, giving plenty, plenty of water. You know, because sometimes they do say like sold them like two inches down. For me, I think that's a little bit too deep. It's okay in the main season when your soil's fairly dry. When it's cold now, you think, well, like the odd one, I can still still see. 
as long as it doesn't dry out they will still send that root downwards into that moisture I just keep sopping them up until uh, until you're happy with that I'm just give them a bit of watery I think of some other jobs I can get on with now because um, the ground is still wet outside and I can't get anything done out there I mean, it's nice today but need a few nice days to get on with stuff so you think well the growing can't really begin out there so I might as well start it in here and these are plant these out providing there's no problems and they all come up um, about a month like that, three or four weeks to be down the plot and I've not even started preparations on the plot yet really a little bit of weeding that's about it but I'm hoping to get up there next week to carry on clearing stuff and try and get ready what I can it's just uh, a little bit tricky to find the time at a minute it's sort of like uh, busy with stuff at band and I've got umpteen uh, hospital appointments for like myself, my partner and my dad which seems to be a bit of a second place to visit the hospital at the moment <laughs> So we'll get there. Season season has arrived, you know. I mean, this sunshine it's it's beginning. You know, so uh, you might see a little bit more appearance of that big yellow ball in the sky. But I was fine. As soon as you get the spade out, I think I'll get stuck in with that. The rains come, <laughs> but that's just gardening, especially in the UK. Anyway, you just work, work with what you got. You'll still get some of it. You know, and obviously now with the temperatures climbing a bit, you're getting a bit more double figures in the daytime and the night time. Uh, the old slugs and snails are going to start making an appearance. So if you can dispatch them, do little nightly patrols if you can with a torch, if you can get rid of them. That will put a bit of a dent in the uh, the breeding population. So you'll always get him, right? But you can eliminate him a little bit, then you're not so bad then. I did sow some peas in a pot well, a few weeks ago um, on the windowsill, and they all rotted off. I don't, I don't know if there's anything with it. Different compost mix, so I just used just my own, which it can be quite wet. This is just a mixture of two spent compost. There is a little bit of my own in here. It's got like bits of perlite in it. But yeah, I think it's what I grew with some spuds in last year. And my pepper plants. And my chilli plants. I thought well, instead of wasting it, use it up. Price of compost now is a bit ridiculous to be honest. You know, anything to try and prevent us growing our own. If it gets any, any deer, I'll have to go back to just sowing direct in ground. It's just one of them little jobs you can get on with. You know, and things are growing. You know, I've got pretty much like all my brassicas are in tubs and trays now. Onions seem to be doing okay now. After that bad germination thing that happened. I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a minute actually. Tell you sort of like how I sort of managed to overcome it a little bit. I think they're about they're about done at that then peas I think. Just go along and now just I mean I've got a piece of wood in here somewhere if I can find it. Yeah. Kind of fits on the gutters nicely. Not a case of pressing it down it's just uh, making sure it's all tampered down sort of level it's just when you water it then it's not going to sort of all wash off you know because if it's if it's on a slope too much it'll just run off and you want it to kind of just percolate through and drain down to the bottom of the gutter and this just basically makes sure that uh, the actual seed is in you know good contact with, with the growing medium really you know, and uh, obviously, if you've got too much air in there, it'll dry out quite quickly. 
I'll just give it quite a quick water because I've not got much water in my watering can. So there we go. I'll probably not water them again for about two weeks now. Unless they go really dry, because it's sometimes when you water them like that, it compacts on top and as the, as the peas start to um, germinate, you'll see they start lifting chunks of it up. But um, so unless it gets like really hot, if it starts to get too dry, I'll probably just cover it over to let it um, rehumidify rather than water. Because they don't need light to germinate straight away. You know, you could cover them with a blank of wood for, a, you know, three or four days. Um, like I say, you've got to be wary of mice and things like that. You know, and the temperature on the shelf right now, because it is in the sun, it's like 21 degrees, so. As long as the daytimes get to that temperature, you know, this compost will warm up and it'll stay warm through the night. You know, so it could be easier, really, so that's the peas, the Hearst green shaft. Let's talk about these onions. So, obviously, some of you know I had bad germination, like in these trays here. Um, not my fault. I did them all the same, different seed companies. Um, they're two different, two different seed companies. Um, one was DT Browns, which is this one, and then this was I think was Seed Megastore. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've got quite a few onions. I'm probably not going to need them all. So I bought some bigger trays. I thought, right, I'll try some it. So I um, got this great big tray. As you can see it's probably not 100%, but I'd probably say 99% germination. Um, and all I basically did, filled the tray up, watered it, and then I um, I got the onion seeds, I put them on some kitchen paper. Or some damp, I basically wet some kitchen paper, wrung it out, and then put it inside a little tub, put the seeds on top of it, and then uh, put them like high up above the radiator. So they got a little bit of bottom heat, not, not too warm, but just got warm. And I found they started sprouting in about three to four days. And as I saw one sprout, I sold them. So I was sort of in kind of batches, I mean, because you'd look one day, there'd be none, next day there'd be 20, you know. So over about three or four days, I sold it. I mean, there's, I think it's 240 onions this tray holds. Um, so you do save a lot of compost. And it is tricky to keep the water under control because it's quite small modules. You know, and the outside ones always dry out first. But like I say, um, once the seeds sort of sprouted, you know it's viable. So um, that might be a way, you know, because some people have problems with these, the brun shallots. You know, it might be a way that if you've got some seeds that you're unsure about, um, a way to do it. This is a bit of a faff, you know, I'm to sow one at a time, but at least you know you're not going to end up with trays like this. If none of your seeds are sprouting on the kitchen rolls, they're definitely not going to sprout inside compost. So you're not waiting to watch the failure happen. You can kind of know it's failed before you even actually sow it. So it's just a... I found it, it germinated quicker, to be honest. I mean, sometimes when you put them in a, in a tray like this, it can take you know, a couple of weeks to come up. But we're doing them on the kitchen roll, you know, I mean, it was three or four days on the kitchen paper and then you put them in and probably two days after you start seeing them come up. I've had some nibble one of these off in here, to be honest. But sometimes if it's not nibbled off flat to the ground, it'll, it, it will reshoot again. Onions are quite resilient like that. But I just have to watch it because some of these are drying out a little bit, so I don't want to overwater them because they can damp off. I just thought to, I thought I'd share that with you because I was going to actually do some more, but I don't need any more. And I might do my leeks the same way, to be honest. But leeks is just put in a big pot and just um, pre-water, and then just uh, don't don't put them too deep, and then cover them up for a week. But um, yeah, they're doing okay. But one thing I've got to prick out soon. I thought they'd failed, to be honest. I've got some uh, some beetroot in this tray here. Somebody's had a go at them as well. Um, remember a few videos ago I well, saw some celery that's actually germinated I mean they're quite old seeds them to be honest um, I think they're all celery there might be a few weed seeds in there I don't know if it's been on compost but um, I need to prick them out as small as they are and then uh, but I've probably got enough celery there so I don't need to worry about buying any more seeds I'll probably get 20 out of that so they need to go into a tray I bought some of these modern trays they're all right, but I've, I mean, they're handy that they split, but I'd like to have a bit more robust so you can split them. But if you pick them up, they're not even connected there. Um, 
So just be careful if you've got to trade. These are, when you're buying them, they're actually 60 cell, these. Which is great. They could do with a bigger hole in the bottom, you know, so you could push. I know the child dowding trays are bigger holes, but they're, um, they're quite expensive then. And when you're skinty poos like me, you've got to try and do it as cheap as you possibly can. So uh, that's it for this bit, and uh, I don't know what else I'll add to this video, but uh, I'm sure there'll be something to make a, a full video. So we'll get on with whatever's next on whatever day that is. Right, I've done all I can do down here now, so I've had about two and a half hours down here. It's been non-stop sort of uh, spitting with rain. It's been a little bit heavier at times, which has made it a bit more difficult. Um, so it's not ideal trying to sort of cultivate wet ground, but um, I've not gone too deep, just a top sort of inch and a half. Uh, but it's very wet. Uh, this one wasn't too bad to be honest, once I got the weeds off. Uh, like I said, you know, probably like, you know, a good, good ounce, ounce and a half per square metre blood fish and bone meal um, has gone in each bed. So we've all had a bit of a, a rake. So it's kind of looking a bit more plot like, apart from you might need a canoe to get around the beds or something at the moment. But you can see that like, the soil's eroded away from the bottom of the bed, so the beds are sinking and pushing out from the bottom there. So not a lot I can do that, apart from in the summer if I dig the bed pass up a bit, you know, to raise them a bit, but they'll always settle back down again. Um, it's just erosion, I guess, because if I let the grass grow, you get slug problems and all that lot, and it's too far to bring um, paving flags or gravel or, or that, that amount of wood chips. I just haven't got the, the energy or the funds at all for that. Um, I've got some wood chips that were donated by Scrivens, which I'm going to put in the fruit cage because uh, that needs clearing. But yeah, these beds are all done. Um, kind of almost ready to go. I say, if we get a few dry days, I'll come down, just tickle the tops over the rake just to pick out any anything that's sort of rerouted. Skim that over with a push pull hole just to knock some of the weeds down. The grass clumps will have to skim off with a spade when I actually get the uh, potatoes planted. Um, like I said, I need to clear that off for the peas, but I can do that when I come down and do the peas anyway. Um, but that's it from here. So uh, a massive thank you to uh, you know people who've donated to the channel because I mean that's enabled me to buy the bloodfish and bone meal. Um, you know, which is a big help. You know, so every, every penny is a massive help because it just al allows me to do this. Um, so uh, right, we shall head back home and. Uh, carry on with uh, some jobs at home probably in the morning um I have to get back and cook tea and, and whatnot and um dry off because i'm soaked so i shall see you back at home in the peloton all right we're back home and it's the day after so i've come out this afternoon because it was absolutely chucking it down this morning so i thought i couldn't do anything in polytunnel um because it was just so loud in there so it's there's another gale about right, look at all trees are flapping about so it's too windy it's too wet to do anything outside uh, it, this is a rarity for my garden i mean it's just absolutely flooded so we'll have a quick look up the top here. So like I said, I've done some prep. So all these beds, I'll try and cover my microphone as best I can. So I've done all these beds, they're all kind of ready to go. Topped them all with my own compost. Um, there's that much wind about some of the, that greenery there. Just, not weeds, it's just leaves that have been blown off the trees. Um, this sandbox is ready. I've not bought any fancy compost. I've just used some spent compost with some topsoil and sand. Um, mixed together with a little bit of bloodfish and bone meal. They're all done. I've done the same with the sweet candle box over yonder. This is at um, like Radicchio. Um, it's obviously not going to heart up, but I thought instead of ripping it all out, it's growing so I can sort of like uh, it's not very nice on its own, but you can mix it with lettuce. But tortoise will eat that. A bit of mint and rosemary in some pots, I need potted on really. Um, that's all uh, in sort of scooped about um, I've had a problem with cats keep coming in there doing the business so I've got a you can see over there a little box a green box a little cat scare they do work to a degree but the squirrels still come and bury the nuts so uh, yeah everything's ready I've not done anything under this tunnel it's just kind of currently storing some buckets of sand and uh, some of my own compost because I need to actually empty one of the compost bins there and put that in one of the wheelie bins and then empty one of my compost bays in there to sort of drain because it, it is really wet so uh, I'll look down here. The raspberries are starting to come up. A few sprigs that are coming up, so the roots are spreading out. So I just keep an eye on them, keep them kind of trimmed. I need to put some bit of framework up as a support for them. And here we've got the uh, the peas in the gutters, which were sown, oh, I don't know, was it 14th, 16th of March, something like that. Um, what are we on today? Uh, 9th, I think. 9th of April. So uh, yeah, they've had a few weeks, been a bit slow. Um, it's starting to come through. I've sown uh, 
some trays here with some in as well just to them day for yesterday just to fill in any gaps you know or if i find a bit of free ground you know what i'm like if i find a bit of free ground i'll i'll not waste it you know even anything like that little frame there i'll stick a couple of peas in the bottom of that or i might drape something down the front of my shed yet yeah. i don't know it's all open to possibilities and having the ceilings ready to fill a gap is uh, is great so that's up the top end um strawberries I've sort of cleaned them up a bit, given a bit of a feed with bloodfish and bone meal, and they're starting to get some fresh tops coming now, but they're absolutely, they were a mess. Um, I've hacked that sage back, um, if, you know, it should re-sprout again, but if it doesn't, I'll sow some more. Um, clean these up a bit, try to get some bloodfish and bone meal in around there. It's obviously that, that grow bag's a year old now, so I'm just hoping it's not got vine weevil in there. Um, watch what I'm doing here, I don't want to fall over. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Bit of a mess still down here, but I'll deal with this on a better day. So I need to transfer that out of there into that black wheelie bin, but it's got some of the other compost in there I need to take out of there and move into one of these. It tends to dry out quite well in one of them. So I'll put it in here and then it's kind of good to use. Uh, still got some carrots in that box I have to pull out. Otherwise there might be some root flies sort of laying in wait, ready to come out. These are just, uh, some uh, there's actually some potatoes in there just put some um sawdust on top I'm trying to stop the squirrels from burying in but i can't move them because actually currently keeping the side of my polytunnel down just trapping this bit of wood because this whole side will flap about otherwise so no repair work i'm not going to bother walking down the garden because it's uh like say it's very windy uh some alpine strawberries they've gone out clear these strawberries up there um Put the top dress where the sweet peas go down there. They are desperate to go out. So uh, we'll have a quick look around in the polytunnel. As you can see, it's, uh, things have come along quite a bit. We'll start down here. So sweet peas are looking a bit of a mess, but no way you can see. But I mean, once you plant them out, you can kind of cut them down to there and they'll sprout out from the sides here and they'll be fine. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about them. Uh, I need to get them in probably this week, but I'll have to wait until this wind's dropped. So the job I'm going to be doing next is potting these on because the plot's so wet, usually I'd plant them direct from this into the plot. You see plenty of roots on that, so it's getting ready for it. So I'm just going to pot them on into this sort of size pot. I've done a load already. Um, it'll be broccoli, uh, these are some of the primal too. Cauliflower, spring greens can stay in these. Um, desperately need water. This is a problem small pots to get a big plant, it start drying out. Obviously, it's yellowing the leaves and stuff. The seed leaves, you don't need them. So they, they'll be going in the garden probably next week then. These are just some leftover lettuce that I didn't bother pricking out. Um, but I'll, I'll not waste them, because you know, pick them. You can have a little tiny bowl of salad if you wanted to. Leftover tomato plants. Can we focus at the back there? They're all leftovers. Typical, no frost or anything. We've just been out here, got a bit leggy. Um, but I've actually watered them once since I brought them out here, so how they're still alive is beyond me. Um, this is some new red fire, uh, mazur, Grenoble red, and little gems. And I've got some Lola Rosso, uh, some more little gems, and some rocket. Spring onions are desperate to go out, so these can get planted very soon. Beetroot, that's getting desperate to go out as well. But I can always re sow some more. Uh, the celery, let's turn that round. This is all the celery that I pricked out from a little tiny tray. I've got a leftover one here. So, you know, they're old seed, but they germinated. It took a while, but they germinated. So I've managed to prick all them out. Um, see how they come. So there's actually 40 in there. I'm not going to do 40, but uh, you never know. And you get, depends what room I've got. Garlic, there's all 80 of them. You know, these are getting uh, fairly desperate to go up. Open, yeah, there's not many roots coming out the bottom because I've kind of let them dry off at the bottom to keep the roots contained in the pot. So I'm, presuming, I'm assuming the, the roots will be going round and round in the bottom, which is not ideal, but um, they'll be right once I get them put in soon. Um, I fed them last week with some liquid seaweed, just a weak mix. Uh, onions, an absolute massive onions here. These are getting to that risky point now where they'll dry out or I can overwater them quite easy and damp them off. So obviously we had the, the thing with the some of the fails, but there's, there's, I'm not going to use all of them. There's God knows how many, probably nearly 400 onions there, but all together. Um, but yeah, I could quite easily probably do um, 
two and a half, three hundred probably. I might, I might find a little gap and plant some really close together, some small onions. Um, the swift potatoes that I put in them pots, <laughs> they've come through. Um, so I've got some potatoes growing away. So yeah, there's uh, not a lot of room in here. So I'm getting kind of uh, desperate to uh, get things in the ground, but obviously because the plot's not ready. So if I can pot them on into these size pots, it allows me a bit more time. Not a lot. Um, I've got to do the whole drinking straw business because of the leather jackets. Um, well, they don't know what leather jackets look like. I found a couple today actually, because I've got where Kane's um, my tortoise's uh, little water thing is there. They just go in there and they tend to just drown. So I'll fish two out and that's what they look like. Predominantly eat roots, but they travel just under, under the surface and just on the surface when it's dark. And they, uh, they shear your plants off right at the stem around around there so years ago an old guy told me about this uh, this idea so i started using it probably about 12 years ago and ever since then i've pretty much been 99 percent protected i just put a drinking straw around the stem uh, i'll show you when i do one of these um rigoletto plants how i do it which i'll, I'll, I'll just pop one on and then i'll not, i'll just carry on because it's no point me showing you how i'm potting them all on it is a bit of a squeeze trying to you know put that pot but there is a way I do it because um, obviously brassicas can take a bit of uh, they like a good firm compost so uh, we shall uh, I'll, I'll try and put the camera somewhere it's not going to get shaking about everywhere and we'll uh, we'll do a couple of these right I'll just uh, move these out of the way for a minute um, compost I've got is uh, just some I mixed up it's a bit of my own um, mixed with some bought stuff with some vermiculite in it it's what I've used for all these um, my tomato plants which we'll look at in the next video need putting on again because uh, as you saw in this they're in like little um, seven centimetre pots you know which is um, sort of that size well the next stage I'll be doing I'll be putting them into I'll be sort of like running them down to which ones I want to keep and obviously I'll be keeping some as a backup they'll go into one litre pots and then after that they'll go into um, the three litre pots ready for planting in situ probably sort of end of May so they don't take long to start pumping roots out into these because uh, there's not a lot of room because they're still under the lights because I've no room out here to bring them until I get this out of the way um, so I just have to do uh, I could probably create a little table somewhere further down here and just bring them out occasionally which I might do yet when the weather's a bit more but knowing my luck I'd bring them out and it'd just get hammered by frost so I'm just going to put some uh, bit of compost up yeah say so you know there's bits of twigs in it and all sorts in there it'll be fine right so uh, get one of these try and show you best I can I've got the best camera angle but uh, just hoping the camera won't fall down it's uh, precariously perched up there at the moment so I'm just going to uh, loosely fill this not quite all the way up just up to where it's sort of lip is about a centimetre down I've got a dibber here it's not ideal size but it's near enough so I'm going to get one of the pots the same size as what uh, the uh, whatever they are rigoletto the cabbage is in it's a bit like a mini savoy cabbage they stand really well um, so I've got one of these I'm going to get my dibber shove it all the way to the bottom and then I'm just going to rotate it like that and just make it sort of slightly conical bear in mind this is quite fluffy this compost and then I'm going to sort of that's the end as I'm pushing it down I'm going to twist it and try and get it right down you know so it ends up quite compacted at the bottom but because it's quite dry this you know it, it's okay only if it's wet it'll turn to absolute stodge and pull it out so you've got like a little hole ready made there get your little uh, seedling As you can see plenty of roots on that pop it in it will be a little bit deeper before I actually fill in around that I'll show you this uh, drinking straw thing now now the seed leaves are in the way so it's a bit brutal I'm going to cut them off because once these top leaves are up it doesn't need them anymore 
I mean, if you don't have a problem with bugs or anything like that, uh, leather jackets, just, just plant them. But you need to plant all your brassicas down to, you know, you can go just below, but the, these are the first true leaves, so it needs to go down to there. So I get me a uh, drinking straw to change for a different colour, because I actually use the straws to help be colour coded. And roughly go, you know, a little bit deeper than what I need to go to, to get around the bottom. I've got my little section of it drinking straw and I cut along it like so and you can open it out flat then like that and then I'm going to try and put it I don't know you can see is what I'm going to put it around the stem of the plant let it ping shut and then push it down a little bit and all that'll do is it'll offer that that stem because it's very vulnerable a little bit of protection if you need to you can put another one overlap it around it it's fine and that'll just it, what it helps straighten your plant up you know because if you if you pot your things on they're all bent and that and you can put this this on it's surprising they will sort of right themselves you know and you'll come out a couple of days after and it'll all be straight so don't worry if you sort of brass are laying flat it doesn't matter and then just gonna get some compost scale that around the top like that just firm it in not too firm because it's dry compost you know it, you've got to try and get some of the air out of it you can knock it down a bit like that and i'm just going to a bit of water just give it a bit of water in from the top but ultimately i will sit this in a bowl you know and, and if because it depends how wet the inner part is the idea is, is to encourage the roots to come out from that inner pot into the new compost you know which doesn't take long you know a week two weeks and they'll, they'll all be you know the roots will be there water that in pop your label in you know and in doing so at least it gives me at least another couple of weeks two three weeks before i have to get them down the plot i don't want to become pot bound in this um I do prefer square pots to be honest because there is some sort of myth about roots that go around in a circle find it hard to come out of where if they're going around in a square they find it easy to branch out of how, how true that is I don't know but um, I, I personally agree with that to a degree so all my brassicas are done exactly the same I'm not sowing any Brussels sprouts whether I'm going to I don't know yet so I'm just going to carry on doing all the rest of them so I've got 15 of these I don't need 15 um, but like there's, there's, all, there's always people up at the allotment especially newcomers if they, if they start some you know they're taking the plot for the first time they've not got any seedlings in or anything like that if you've got some leftovers it's always great for them you know if they've got a, a decent sized seedling and you can give them some seedlings to pop in a bed cover them over the net and at least they get a crop in that first year and hopefully that hooks them into it you know that and all they have to figure out then is this because this is my favourite bit the whole um, sowing and, and pricking out and, and the potting on phase you know they're growing them it's they know what to do stick it in the ground it's out of my care then it's up to that you know and on a as soon as this winds drop down i'll put these outside because they do need a knock around off the wind to sturdy up so i need to put drinking straws on all these but that'll be quite time consuming i should have done them a bit smaller but uh, the full intent would be actually going in the ground in like what 10 11 days but we'll cross that bridge <laughs> depending on weather permitting so um yeah so there's a bit of work to do but the sun's out but it is too windy outside and the ground's just far too wet so you don't mind if you don't have rain for a few days and you've got bright sunshine and high winds like this because it will help dry the ground out right that's it for this video like i said in the beginning it's going to be a bit of a mix and match of what's happened in this sort of last month you know which has not been a well there has been quite a lot you know growing um getting on but uh the actual regarding personal work outside and stuff like that, it's just been an absolute uh the weather's been against me and obviously my own health against me as well and obviously carrying it to my father so it's just it's trying to get out it's it's um just being lucky when the weather's right to actually nip out and try and do a bit um but i've just got you know i can like some of you know i've just got to go easy on how much i do um so this bit i don't mind this because it come out and water it now and then but it starts to get to a point where things need water a lot so if you're in that situation um we are having to walk things a lot and you've not got the space from pot them on if you've got the room um but if you've been waiting to sow 
you could sow things now, possibly direct in the ground if you've got a nice dry soil. But if, like my plot, I couldn't sow anything in the ground there, it just rot off in no time. Uh, it's just far too wet. So hopefully, you know, now now this becomes a thing of like kind of life support. I have to, the, these plants are solely dependent on me to stay alive at the moment. And once they get in the ground, they're out of my hands then. But at the moment, there's there's hundreds of plants in here to look after. Probably, probably getting on for a thousand plants nearly in here um, to deal with. So it, it can be quite demanding. So instead of like a little bit of a water, I'll let them dry out a bit and then I'll, I'll put them in water and I'll leave them half an hour in some water. Not really deep water, they only need like, you know, a, a half inch or so at the bottom. And let, them, let the compost take up as much as it needs to. And then they'll probably last it a week. Depending on the weather, you only need like a, a day of hot sun um, and it can dry them out. So I keep my polytunnel door open. So there is a breeze that can pass through, so it doesn't get too hot in here. Um, and also the draft can catch some of the plants and waft them around, which you've got to harden them off, not just to the temperature, but obviously to being outside. So as soon as this wind's dropped, these will be going out. Um, I've got to watch for butterflies, because <laughs> the minute the sun's out and it's calm, the butterflies will come out. And the last thing I want is to get butterflies laying eggs on these, so I might put a little net over them. Um, but they do need a bit of a rock around in the wind, and that just signals to the plant you know make a thicker trunk don't worry too much about the top but it's time to sturdy up um sort of i don't know teen ch children into teenagers you know and get them ready for the world out there to go and do the thing so thanks for watching take care like i said before you know thanks for all the donations to the channel it really does help um, the links in the description below if you want to donate and uh, obviously some uh, other you know things i've used on the channel like compost where i get them from and things like that so take care and I will see you very soon, which will be uh, hopefully potting tomatoes on and finally planting some stuff in the ground. So take care. See you now. Bye bye.